Good morning and welcome to the solution video to problems A1 and A2 of the 2022 Meta Hacker Cup round one. In this problem, uh, we have a deck of cards and we want the cards to be in a particular order. They start out in some order, which might be the same as what we want, and we have to make exactly K cuts in order to get it into that order. Um, a cut works just the same way as it does with a deck of cards. So you take the top half off and then you put the bottom half on top of that. So as an example, if your deck of cards is five, one, two, four, three, and you take the five and the one off, and then you put the two, four, three in the front, then it's two, four, three, five, one. This is one way of looking at it, but an equivalent way is instead of thinking about the cards in a line, we can think about the cards in a circle. So we can have five, one, two, four, three. And initially, the start of the deck is here. But after we make a cut, all we're doing is changing the position of the start of the deck to something else, in this case, before element two. So an easier way of thinking about the problem is rather than having this array, which we're modifying in some rather complex way, we're moving a bunch of elements, changing a whole bunch of position value pairs, we can just move the start, the start pointer. OK, so if this is the problem, the question is just, can an array turn from one thing to another thing if we move the start position k times? Now, in general, for most large arrays and most large k, it's true if one array is a permutation of the other array. So if we have another example here, maybe the example is 2, 4, 3, 5, 1. We can check whether these two things match in problem A1 by finding the index of position 1 and then checking the n things after that to make sure they all match. So the 1 and the 1 match, the 2 and the 2 match, the 4 and the 4 match, the 3 and the 3 match, and the 5 and the 5 match. In particular, I'm just iterating through this in a circle all the way to the beginning, and then seeing if this, taking the same number of steps from it, matches the one in the top array. There, there are some cases you have to be careful with here. In particular, if uh, the size of the deck is small, then you might run into issues. So if n equals 2, if there are only two cards in the deck, then every time you cut, the deck will be uniquely determined. So you have to special case of n equals 2, because then the number of cuts determines what the deck will look like. You also have to be a little careful if k equals 1. So if k equals 1, that means your ending position of the array can't be the same as the starting position of the array. So if k equals 1, then they have to be different. The other case is uh, for k equals 0. If you're not allowed to make any cuts, then the two arrays have to match right away. So these are the things you have to watch out for. They can be a little tricky. So that's the solution to A1. Now the problem is for A2, things can be a bit more tricky. What I relied on here was finding where this one was in the circle. Well in A2 there can be more than one one. And we have to check if any of them are valid ways of doing it. But obviously the check to see if one works, it takes a linear number of steps. So if we do this naively, our code would be n squared, and n is too big for this to be something that would run in the amount of time required. So we're going to need something more advanced. Um, and you can notice that what we're doing here is we're just looking for a certain pattern in this string. So we want to see, if you imagine this string here, we can imagine not moving this string. So we can imagine keeping this the same. And the string that we're searching for, or searching through, is 2, 4, 3, 5, 1, 2, 4, 3, so we're trying to find, does this string exist anywhere in this larger string? And in fact, it does. It exists here. So we can do this with a whole bunch of string algorithms. Uh, one possible one is KMP. That might be the easiest if you're not familiar with any. Uh, there's also z-values, hashing. There are lots of different things you can throw at this. But any string algorithm that lets you do a one particular check amortized in order one time rather than linear time, that'll make your code run in linear time overall or maybe n log n, depending on the algorithm you choose. Of course, you want to make sure that your edge cases that you wrote for A1 still work for A2. You can have other cases that might be a bit more tricky, like two characters that are the same uh, for A2, which you couldn't have in A1. So you want to make sure that your, your edge cases are all copacetic. But if everything looks good, then you should be able to submit, and then you should have a linear solution for A2 as well. Awesome. Thank you for watching, and hope to see you in round two.